The way I want to tell you is that uh, 24 hours ago, I was in uh, Eindhoven, uh, the Netherlands, where I signed off on a new microscope that uh, we had just acquired. Uh, it's a $5 million microscope. It's um, a very high-end uh, electron microscope. And we're very excited to be able to have gotten this microscope, and we're excited uh, at the prospect of installing it here uh, in Singapore. Uh, the reason uh, I want to tell you about this microscope is because of the promise it holds for exciting research here in Singapore. And that's really why I came from MIT to Singapore was because uh, it would have I'm pretty sure I would never have been able to get this microscope uh, at MIT or at the Whitehead Institute. And uh, I think the uh, one experiment that uh, we have thought that we want to do is a very exciting one. Um, a year ago, there was a paper published in Science by a chemistry group at UC Berkeley where they described uh, watching a platinum uh, atom migrate around, collide with another platinum atom, and then those two atoms started the growth process in a platinum crystal. Now, to be able to watch that with your two eyes in a microscope is something remarkable because you're actually watching the first steps in the formation of a structure, of a material. Uh, in biology, uh, rather than watching individual atoms collide, uh, all of biological material is made of proteins, and those are strings of uh, amino acids, which are, are molecules, much larger kinds of uh, entities. And what we want to be able to do with this microscope, since we know we can see individual atoms, we want to actually see a protein molecule. Uh, now, the w reason why I emphasize the word C is because currently we know how proteins are, uh, uh, what their structures are. So if you just think of, for the non-biologists, if you just think of a very long string of spaghetti and you just crunch it together into a mass, that's basically what the protein structure looks like. It looks like a single chain all wrapped around each other. There's rules for how they're wrapped around. But... Uh, the way in which we know the path that, those, uh, that that noodle takes is derived from a very torturous indirect way where we grow crystals of those proteins and then we solve the structure of, those, of that protein in its crystalline state. So that's a very laborious process. Most proteins can't be crystallized. Now, in contrast, what I want to do is not to crystallize the protein, but I actually want to watch individual molecules of that protein as individuals. And in the electron microscope, what you can imagine is that if we froze that protein, we would see the protein embedded in ice in its various forms. The protein will be tumbling around in space. We'll be able to watch, see the different forms, uh, orientations of that protein. So we're pretty sure we can do that uh, because that's, in fact, one of the techniques that the microscope is already used for. But what we want to really do is watch the protein tumble in water, which is what it normally does, and take pictures as it's tumbling. So as it's tumbling, we'll be able to get pictures of the protein in all its orientations. And hopefully, we should be able to reconstruct what the topology of that protein is. And I think that's, it's a very direct way of solving the structure of the protein at a very low resolution. But I think it's an exciting first step uh, in the direction that uh, uh, imaging can take and contrib contribute to uh, struct the, our understanding of the basic structures of uh, proteins. So that's why we're excited about getting this microscope, and that's why we're excited about what we want to do with the microscope. And I think uh, it's very exciting for Singapore if we were able to pull this off.